Welcome back, this is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. We're doing Linear Algebra 1. This is Chapter 2, Matrices. Section 2.3 is going to be the Identity Matrix and Inverse Matrices. This lecture specifically, what we're going to do is give the definition of the n by n Identity Matrix, IN, and the definition of the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. Let's get to that. The n by n Identity Matrix, denoted IN, is the matrix with all diagonal entries equal to 1s and all of the off-diagonal entries are equal to zero. Here's I2, here's I3, here's I4, and they're just going to get bigger and bigger. All of the diagonal entries are ones, and all of the off-diagonal entries are zeros. Why do we want this? This is going to play the role of number one. When we multiply a real number by one, it leaves everybody alone, and we want an analog to that. Theorem, let A be a matrix of size M by N, then we have I M times A is A, it leaves A alone, and if we multiply on the other side, A times I N is going to be A. In particular, if A is a square matrix, we want to live in this land most of the time anyways. If A is a square matrix, we have that the identity matrix on the left when we multiply, and when we multiply on the right, just leaves A alone. And this is the one we really want for square matrices. Let's do an example of that. Alright, example two, let B be this 2 by 3 matrix. And let A be this 2x2 two two matrix. Let's see what happens to the identity matrix. First of all, what we're going to do with the first one, we have, we're going to look at identity, the 2x2 two two identity matrix, I2. And we're going to look at I3, which is the 3x3 three three identity matrix. This is 2x2. Two two. Remember, our notation, is lazy, our, our notation is lazy, but it's I2x2. Two two, and this one is I3x3. Three Therefore, because this is 2 by 3, first of all, we want to look at I2 by 2 is technically what it is, times B2 by 3. The inside indices match, and the outcome will be 2 by 3 again. And what are we going to get? We're going to get 1, 0, 0, 1 multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 1, 5. This is essentially how the proof goes. I'll put the proof in a PDF on the web page and in the link below. But essentially what's going to happen is... In the proof it's going to be the general idea of this stage. What we're going to do now is this is 2 by 2 and this is 2 by 3 and it's well defined therefore we're going to get a 2 by 3 matrix and we're going to, what are we going to get? We're going to get 1 plus 0 is 1. We're going to get 2 plus 0 is 2. We're going to get 3 plus 0 is 3 and then in the second row we're going to get 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1, and 0 plus 5 is 5, and that happens to be, again, the matrix B. So if we multiply by I2, by this 2 by 3 matrix, we get B. Similarly, if we take B, which is 2 by 3, and multiply it by I3 by 3, we're going to get that the inside indices match, and we're going to get the outcome will be 2 by 3 again. So we're going to do uh, B was 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 1, 5 this time, multiplied by 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is going to give me, again, what? A 2 by 3 matrix, which is, now we're going to get 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 2 plus 0 is 2, 0 plus 0 plus 3 is 3, and then we're going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1, and 0 plus 0 plus 5 is 5, which happens to be oh, B again. Therefore, when we multiply by these respective matrices, when they're not a square matrix, you have to multiply by the identity matrix on the left and right, and it's a different size, but they leave them alone as the point. Now, when we try this with a square matrix, what happens? We can squeeze this in. 2 is going to be, if I look at <coughs> A times I2, for instance, that is going to be A, B, C, D, which is 2 by 2, times 1, 0, 0, 1, which is also 2 by 2. The inside indices match, and the outcome will be 2 by 2. And what are we going to get? We're going to get A plus 0 is A, <coughs> 0 plus B is B, C plus 0 is C, 0 plus D is D, which is A, of course. You can try it the other way. Let's look at what we mean by the inverse of a matrix now. 
All right, so what we're doing is we're gonna try and mimic the one by one linear system completely for the rest of this video and for the next couple of videos. The idea is to view a linear n by n system as a matrix equation and then solve that matrix equation. Before we do this one, let's recap this side. If we have a one by one linear system, ax equals b. If we have that a is not zero, we have a condition on a, it can't be any a. If a is zero, then we can't solve it that way. If a is not zero, then we have that the inverse, we call it the multiplicative inverse of a exists, a minus one, or you're used to calling it one over a, the reciprocal. Once we know that, we have the unique solution is x is b over a, or a inverse b. I write it like this specifically because we're gonna try and mimic it over here. What we're really doing actually is we're taking this equation, multiplying both sides by a inverse, then what we do is we use a few properties. We associate now and we have A inverse A on this side and A inverse B on this side. Then what happens here is A inverse A turns into the number one and one leaves X alone. So we have solved uniquely for X using rules of the real numbers. What we wanna do is mimic these rules and get a matrix multiplication, a matrix identity, and then a matrix inverse. We already know that matrix identity leaves everybody alone and then what we, we want is an inverse matrix for a matrix a such that when we multiply them together we're going to get the identity matrix if we can do that we seek to find conditions when an n by n matrix has an inverse this is going to be when the determinant is non-zero what's the determinant you're going to have to watch a few videos from now in the next couple videos we will start de defining what a determinant is and giving a formula for how to compute these things for now we will have a condition but when does this exist? And if it does, then we can solve uniquely for this system by multiplying both sides by A inverse. Then we're going to associate A, A inverse is the identity matrix this time. The identity matrix times X leaves it alone. And we have uniquely solved for all of our solutions to our linear system. And we'll have a unique solution in the form of A inverse matrix multiplication by the vector B, this guy. Therefore, what we're going to do now is define the inverse of a matrix and then we're going to seek two different separate methods for finding the inverse of a matrix because it's not going to be easy to find at first and we want conditions for when it exists it doesn't always exist let's get to it to finish off this video what we're going to do is give the definition of an inverse of a matrix and then give the first result about inverse matrices the definition is given a square n by n matrix we call a invertible if there is an inverse matrix denoted A minus one, such that A minus one times A is identity, and that's also equal to A times A minus one. When we multiply on both sides by A, we get the identity matrix is what that's saying. We don't know about commutativity again, remember, so we have to check both of them. If no such matrix exists, then we call a non-invertible or singular is the classic terminology for the inverse not existing. Again, what we want is eventually in the next couple videos, what we're going to do is give conditions for when an inverse actually exists and give more than one method for finding inverses. But for now, you should be asking yourself, when can I determine whether an inverse exists and how do I find it if they, we claim that it does exist? Towards that end, the first part of that story is going to be theorem. If A inverse exists, then it is unique, is what we're saying. For simplicity, call the inverse B or C. And if we have two of them, then if B is an inverse of A, then we know that A times B is identity and B times A is identity. Similarly, if C is an inverse, we have the same conditions. Now let's cleverly start with this one. A times B is I N multiply both sides of that by C and we get this cab is equal to CI C times identity is C so I clean that up immediately then we're going to associate the brackets properties of multiplication of matrices I can associate them therefore I have C times a B equals C but C times a we know is also the identity so we can turn that into identity times B and what does identity do it leaves B alone, so we get, in fact, that B was C. So if you have two matrices that both do that to A, they are, in fact, the same matrix. Next time, what we're going to do is we're going to give a method using elementary matrices to compute the inverse of a matrix, and then we'll have a way of determining either whether it exists or finding the unique inverse. 
And then what we're going to do further is start de developing the notion of determinant and then giving a systematic condition for when the determinant is non-zero, if and only if the inverse exists, and then we'll give an algebraic formula for that inverse. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time.